so here it is the Fieldcraft Survival T700 or the Tenere 700 or the T7 whatever you want to call it so this bike has been a build for about three months now uh, we picked it up in February after the snow bike trip with Fieldcraft Survival and then we got to talking and we were thinking, what can we do to build this bike up to show it off at the Overland Expo? Philcraft Survival is gonna have a main booth there at the, at the Expo on May 20th, the weekend of May 20th. And if you're gonna be in the area, definitely swing by and check it out. It's gonna be a great event. One of the big things we talked about is what can we do to this bike that's gonna make it look good, but also stay rideable. We had some really good ideas about putting a, a nav tower and a, a rally kit and all that stuff on it. But at the end of the day, once we got to talking about it, it really doesn't make it great for adventure riding. And this bike is really designed for that. Hitting the trails, hitting the long routes, and really just having a great time on it and being comfortable. So that's what we shot for. I'm out here on my property right now. It's a nice 80 degree day, a little bit warm, but in the shade here, it feels great. So before I really dive into what all we did to the bike, let's hop back on, go rip around the property, maybe go find some gravel roads, and then we'll kind of dig in and, and I'll let you know everything that we did to it. One of my favorite hills on the property it's a elk trail nice and rocky and i'm sure it doesn't look like nothing on the video but rocky steep Ooh, kicked me not exactly the trail but Whee! Just stay on the gas. Ooh, almost, almost smashed my camera into that tree. We all know this thing is a beast off-road, but how is it on the highway? We're on the backcountry rural roads. Well, I freaking love it. It's obviously no BMW R1250 or anything like that, but even with this tiny windscreen, it does a really good job of uh, pushing the wind away. You get a lot of good clean air, and you really don't have any buffeting, which I really like. It's very smooth, the suspension feels great. This bike really is one of those bikes that's kind of a Swiss Army knife. It can do it all. It can do highway trips, it can do the dirt, single track trails if you're good. And at a price of around ten to $12,000, it's really not a bad uh, price point to get started into the sport. You may even be able to find them cheaper than that, used. It does make you smile. The power delivery is just is so smooth. So there's a little bit of an OHV park over here. I'm gonna try and play with that. There's a water crossing down there. I haven't been here in a couple years so not exactly sure what's all there the water crossing might be a little bit muddy just have to see yeah it's a little wet down here A little muddier than normal. Not surprised though. A little tight in here. Trying to knock them bags off. 
if I remember right. Yeah, there's a pretty big step up on that far side. So we'll go the bridge. And then maybe on the way back, we'll hit, hit the water crossing. Ah, we'll hit it right now. The water crossing on the way back is not as challenging because there's a drop down right here. So we'll just get my front tire down. Maybe. Huh. Well, we are high centered. Well, we got to commit now. Yeah, that's deep. Let's see if we can get on here. Da, 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 da. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Man, that drop was a little bit bigger than I remembered it. Yeah, glad I didn't try to hit that the first time because that is deceiving. So the Yamaha T7 or the Tenere 700, whatever you want to call it, it is a phenomenal bike. And why did we pick it? Well, one, it's pretty affordable. At that ten dollars to $12,000 range brand new, out of the box being a pretty dang good bike, that's not bad. Also, they're just very sought after right now. It's a very popular bike. It's pretty lightweight for an adventure bike. Um, it's kind of a Swiss Army knife, like I said before. It can do highway, it can do gravel roads. It can do two track, no problem. Even some single track for some skilled guys. We wanted to make this build something that anybody could do when they want to add parts to a bike. So in, in the beginning, we had some big plans to add a nav tower, um, a rally tower, things like that. And uh, acropovic exhaust, we we're going to do the suspension to the nines. And then it realistically, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to try and say, hey, this is the bike that we built. You should build that bike because not everybody can do that. So we kind of sat back and thought, what can we do to make this bike comfortable on the highway, uh, perform great in the dirt, and then let's be honest, it looks sexy. So let's just go around the bike and let's talk about some of the parts that were donated for this bike to make this build possible. Huge thanks to Revzilla who donated some parts for us, uh, Moscow Moto who did, donated all the luggage, Outback Motor Tech with the skid plate, crash bars, rear racks, and the tail rack, A to Z concepts for the fort guards, IMS pegs, just to name a few. First off, let's just walk around the bike and just acknowledge how awesome this thing looks. Got my squeaky boots. All right, so let's just talk about the obvious ones here. Crash bars, skid plate, pannier racks. Outback Motor Tech stepped up and uh, sent us these parts to add to this bike. They've taken a beating so far, um, nothing but just scratches and that's it. No movement at all in the crash bars, no dings in the skid plate or anything like that. And then the luggage racks are awesome. Nice and sturdy. When the bags aren't on there, they act as protection for the exhaust. Really love these things. No particular order here at all. We'll just go ahead and go to the Moscow Moto bags. These are the Moscow Moto 35 liter backcountry panniers. These things are amazing. I have these on my um, GS as well. Really easy to get on and off. Um, they take a beating like we can see here. Bike went down, no worries at all. Just a little bit of dirt, no, no tears or anything like that. On the back, we have a 30 liter backcountry bag. This is great for um, if you're doing long trips and you need to keep your all of your stuff that you don't want to get broken up top when the bike goes down, nice and safe there. The Nomax bag is awesome. You would think that it would get in the way being so, so big, but it really doesn't. Um, when you stand up, it's nice to lean up against it. Really take some of the weight off your hands. 
it's really great. And then another awesome thing about this bag is that it's got a built-in water bladder. So going down the road, you can hydrate as you go and you don't have to wear it on your back. This is where I keep all my camera gear. If the bike goes down, definitely not gonna get hurt there unless you had some kind of catastrophic issue. Next on the list, IMS foot pegs. These are the Rally foot pegs. They're nice and large. This is my hand here. I think they're about four and a half inches long or five inches long, something like that. Great stability on these. And they have some nice durations as well. So you can get good grip no matter what, if it's wet or muddy or whatever. Tour Tech also sent us some parts. We have this nice headlight guard here to protect the headlight when you know, you're behind somebody and you don't wanna catch any roost into the headlight and break that expensive headlight. Also these uh, uh, hand guards as well. These are nice aluminum uh, shaft here to keep it nice and strong for when the bike goes down. That takes all the brunt and uh, definitely nice to have those to keep your lever safe. Double take mirrors, if you're not familiar with those, these are a mirror that are nice because when you hit the ground, they move around and you can loosen and tighten them up or move them out of the way entirely just to make sure that you're not gonna have any damage to those. So double take mirrors, that was a great thing to add onto these, this bike. Another part that comes in handy here is the A to Z Concepts uh, fork guards. Those protect the forks from any, get, from any damage, no rocks, sticks, anything like that are gonna scratch your forks up. Another huge contributor to this bike was Revzilla. They hooked us up with the Alt Rider uh, High Fender Kit, which is a really nice kit. Uh, comes with all the brake lines and everything. Um, really easy to install and really adds an aggressive look to the bike. Another thing they sent us was this Alt Rider Fender Eliminator Kit. And if you are familiar with this bike, it's got these, this god awful fender in the back with this, these huge lights, uh, turn signals in the back. And this kit eliminates all that, replaces the plastic fender with a, an aluminum fender. And then we also have the optional Cyclops turn signals on both the back and the front. Gives a nice look. So you can be seen. And then the turn signals have that nice flash and end direction over to the front kind of the same deal have that tracer style blinker and then they also double as these nice bright running lights another thing that revzilla hooked us up with were these heated grips the bike doesn't come with heated grips from the factory um, so trying to find a good set of heated grips is is really important for those long cold rides and these are the coso heated grips they have a factory look to them. The button is right here. You don't have a control module or anything like that, like some of the other brands. And then it's simply, you just tap the button. You get, you know, five different levels of heat. Really nice heated grips for that, for this bike. And the last thing that uh, Revzilla sent us was some Denali D4 lights. Unfortunately, we were unable to install those because adding them to the high fender kit, um, it, allow, it didn't allow the brake lines to move freely. And there was really no good spot to, to, to mount them without them either getting in the way of the fender or sticking outside the crash bar and then we would just knock them off the first time the bike went down. So we opted to not install those, but the headlight and these running lights uh, really make you be seen anyway. So um, a little bit bummed we weren't able to install those, but again, huge thanks to Revzilla for tr trying to make it happen. Tires, let's talk about tires here. So Motos USA or actually Pacific Power Sports out of um, Ontario, Oregon sent us these tires. This is the Motos Tractionator ADV on the rear. And then here in the front, we have the Dual Venture, which is their new uh, front tire or their new tire in general, but we, uh, it's very common to put it on the front. Um, nice aggressive tread, very similar to a TKC80 kinda, but you don't get the cupping and issues like that that you do with the TKC80. And then the rear, these are very good on the highway. And then again, off-road, they hook up and I, I've ran these on all my bikes for seven years now or so and have no complaints. I absolutely love this tire. I would say probably the only complaint I have with it is they're a little bit loud on the highway. But other than that, I'll sacrifice some noise for hooking up in the dirt. One of the last freebies that we got here was the Seat Concepts Rally Seat. This thing is so comfortable. Um, it's a little, it's dished out the seat area right where you normally ride when going down the road, super comfortable. And it's the one piece seat instead of the two piece seat. So it allows you to move freely back and forth on the seat uh, when you're riding off road and you're not feeling that seam there. Or Some additional parts that we added to the bike, a really big one was the Scott steering stabilizer. This stabilizer really makes it nice off road. Uh, it's, it saves you so many times when you're pushing in the loose stuff. So 
Uh, that was a, an absolute must to add to the bike. We also added a Garmin Zumo XT and it's on a Modology, Modology Films um, dash plate. So what that does is it relocates the original dash over and allows you to install your Garmin on the same playing field essentially instead of having it up here and having it bounce around. There's been some issues with having, gar having GPS is mounted up top and causing some damage to the tower. And as I mentioned before, there were a couple things that we wanted to do to the bike originally. We were gonna beef up the suspension and we were also going to add Acropovic exhaust. But at the end of the day, uh, th this bike actually sounds really good. Um, we didn't really think that it was necessary to add that. The performance on it's marginal and you're really not losing that much weight either. Like some people like to say that they're, that's the reason why they do it. Um, let's be real honest it's for the sound the acropovic exhaust sounds amazing but this bike sounds really good as well and we just opted to not do it and as far as the suspension goes um we just didn't really honestly have the time to do it we looked at tour tech suspension we looked at some other options and after riding this bike over and over again it really isn't that bad out of the box so we decided just to keep it the way it is it might be something that we do in the future but for now we decided just to keep it the way it is so the only thing we have left to do with this bike, um, tomorrow I am jumping in the truck, taking it down to Heber City, Utah to deliver it, and then it is going to get wrapped. So super excited about that. Uh, Multicam is going to wrap this bike for us, and it's going to look phenomenal for the Overland Expo. All right, guys, that about does it. If you have any questions at all about any of these parts, hit me up in the comments below. There'll be links to all of these parts uh, in the description as well, so definitely feel free to check those out. Huge thanks to Fieldcraft Survival for allowing me to collaborate with you guys and build this bike for you. Also a huge thanks to all of our sponsors who helped put parts on this bike and make it what it is. If you're gonna be in Arizona, May 20th, the weekend of May 20th at the Overland Expo, check this bike out. Don't forget to go by the booth. Say hi to Mike at Fieldcraft Survival. Uh, check out those guys. It, their booth is amazing. They're gonna have motorcycles, Overland vehicles, all the things, teaching survival classes. So swing by, check them out, let them know I sent you. That all being said, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.